This tutorial is all about the allotropes of carbon, uh, graphite, diamond and also fullerenes and being able to relate the properties of graphite and diamond to the uses of these two allotropes. The first thing we must do is to know about the different forms of carbon and to be able to recognize which structure is which. Well, diamond graphite and Buckminster fullerene are all forms of the same element, carbon. In other words, they all consist of only carbon atoms. But those carbon atoms are arranged in different structures, and these different structural forms of the same element are called allotropes. Here's the structure of the first allotrope of carbon, which is diamond. In diamond, each of the carbon atoms, as you can see here, are joined to four other carbon atoms by strong covalent bonds. In graphite, each carbon atom is surrounded by only three other carbon atoms, and it forms this kind of chicken wire structure, these hexagonal tessellations, but each layer is separated from each other layer only by very weak attractions, which are easily broken. Because it's got these covalent bonds between the atoms, it's still got a high melting point and high boiling point, but it's not as hard as diamond is. Graphite also has a giant structure, but in graphite each of the carbon atoms is only joined to three other carbon atoms, and the structure is in layers. Many of these hexagonal uh, tessellations, like chicken wire, these flat layers separated from each other by uh, weak bonds. Buckminster fullerene, however, is not a giant structure. It's made of small molecules of 60 carbon atoms in a ball. Here's a past paper question. Carbon can exist in different solid forms. We have diamond, we have graphite. These are two forms of carbon. Write down the name of the third form. This would be Buckminster fullerene. And you do need to know the full name because it says ignore just fullerene or Buckminster. You must know and learn the physical properties of diamond and explain using these properties why diamond is used for two particular uses cutting tools and jewellery. Reviewing diamond's structure a second time each carbon atom has got four identical single covalent bonds and these are strong. This makes diamond hard because it's difficult to break these strong bonds by scraping against something else for example. It's got a high melting point again because these bonds take a lot of energy in order to break it. Diamond's also colourless and lustrous which means it catches a light or shines. It doesn't conduct electricity and it's insoluble in water. So the main two uses of diamond can be related to its properties. First of all diamond is used in cutting tools. Why is it used in cutting tools? Because diamond is very hard and therefore will scratch or work its way through other materials. And secondly, because it's got a high melting point, the end of cutting tools would get very, very hot and you wouldn't want the diamonds on the end to melt. Secondly, diamond is used in jewellery. Why is it used in jewellery? Because it is lustrous, in other words, it catches the light, and because it's colourless and clear, in other words, see-through. Other properties that diamond has are that it's insoluble in water and doesn't conduct electricity, but these aren't particularly relevant to these two uses you need to learn. Next we look at the physical properties of graphite and relate those two to the two main uses of graphite. Reviewing the structure of graphite a second time, we see again that each carbon atom has got three carbons surrounding it by covalent bonds, but it only has weak attractions between each of these layers. So graphite has a high melting point because in order to melt it, you need to break these strong covalent bonds, but it's soft because these layers can slide over each other. It conducts electricity, it's black, 
opaque and lustrous, in other words it catches the light, but it's also insoluble in water. Now we have to relate the two main uses of graphite to the properties. Graphite is used in dry lubricants, for example in door locks, because it is slippery and because it has a high melting point. The high melting point wouldn't be important as a lubricant in door locks, but it would be in large machinery which would get hot. Graphite is also used in pencil leads, mixed in, in fact, with clay. And it's used in pencil leads because it's black and lustrous, so it makes a black mark. Uh, it's opaque, which means that you can't see through the marks, and it's slippery, which means that it slides off, layers slide off the pencil lead and onto the paper. Other properties of graphite, being that it's insoluble in water and conducts electricity, aren't relevant to the two uses given here. Here's a past paper question on this topic. This question is about forms of carbon. Carbon occurs in three forms, which are given there. But Minster fullerene and graphite are two forms. Write down the name of the other form. As I said, you need to be able to recognize these forms from pictures. This one is diamond. Some properties of graphite are that it's shiny and it's insoluble in water. Write down two other properties of graphite. Well, thinking particularly of pencils, we might say it is slippery and it is opaque. Opaque is the opposite of see-through. And then we have the answers. The structure was of diamond and any two of these properties are acceptable. Have a look at what is acceptable but also have a look at ones which are unacceptable answers. Here's another question. One of the properties of graphite is that it doesn't dissolve in water. Write about two other properties of graphite. Well, let's think of two other ones that we haven't thought of before. Uh, it conducts electricity. It has a high melting point. Frankly, the two that we wrote in the previous question would have done just as well. I'm just offering a bit of variety here. Diamonds used in making cutting tools write down two reasons why. Well, it has a high melting point. And it is hard. And as you can see, these are the answers which are accepted. Just be very careful to learn those properties word for word and not to use other words which might to you sound the same, but actually are unacceptable on the mark scheme.